Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for P Valley Season 2, Episode 10, Mississippi Rule. Um, okay, so I want to talk about <laughs> I want to talk about how I'm feeling, how I'm feeling about the series. Um, I feel like well, we haven't gotten a green light for a season three, which worries me. Um I'm going to be highly disappointed if they don't renew this this show for a third season. I'm going to be mad. I'm 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 going to be absolutely angry. Um a friend of mine Let me not say that cuz listen, she's the bestie bestie. Okay? So my best friend, I was feeling like, you know, you can't when it comes to the best friend, she always has to get the best friend title and not a friend of mine, you know, cuz a friend of mine would mean I'm talking about a friend of mine but this is my girl <laughs> anyway she um she suggested that i do a video on canceled television shows um and if this one gets if this one don't get get you know the okay i'm gonna absolutely do a video on that because that would be another great show added to the list of great shows that did not get more than one season or more than two seasons anyway let's get to the review Andre and Brittany, they're arguing. You know, she just caught him with Autumn. And so they're arguing. She want to know where they, where they, where things went wrong, all that. Autumn, the whole time, is standing there with the, with the grin on her face, you know, looking. Hmm, Y'all fighting over me? You know, just, she's just getting her life. Um, Andre sends her out, though, so he can talk to Brittany in, in private. And, um, you know, she's telling him that you could have told me about your father. Of course, he's saying no, because, you know, getting getting into your family in the first place was a was a wasn't it wasn't it wasn't an easy feat. And so if I had told you that my daddy was a murderer, you really wouldn't have married me. It it really wouldn't have went down. Um, he tells her that, you know, when he did marry her, though, he felt like he had a chance, not at love, but at legacy. You know, he, 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 they both use one another. It, uh, it, it, maybe she was trying to rebel, you know, from her Jack and Jill upbringing and, and marrying a regular guy. And he trying to, you know, come up by marrying the girl from the Jack and Jill, the girl, the girl next door, if you will, the girl with a little bit of, you know, influence and power and money um so they both were using one another and he basically tells her you can go and marry that doctor that you was fucking because i mean i know this is what you wanted to do anyway and she's like what i ain't tell you that i want to be with you you're my husband i want to make i want to be you know in this marriage because she's like you trying to divorce me because he's basically trying to push her away like you didn't want me no way don't girl don't worry about all that i mean you you cheated i cheated we might as well just go on and get a divorce because I, I ain't happy no way. And I know you're not happy. Just really pushing her out the door. And she's just like, whoa, I'm trying to save this here. He say he in love with, a mar with another woman anyway. And and that's really that's really that. <laughs> um, Corbin walks in and interrupts them. And so they got to go and do the whole greet the crowd and all of that and, and, and remain a united front for the media. So there's that. They're going to go and play the game. Um, at the pink, Murder is standing there looking in the mirror. It's it's a broken mirror, it looks like. So it's because it's, you know, it's, it's all pieces and everything. And um, he looking in the mirror, just looking at himself, you know, looking at the man in the mirror. <laughs> and he pulls out his grills and he goes on stage. And, you know, DJ never scared, ready to get the crowd going. And he tells him to turn the music off and stop the music or whatever. And then he starts, like, freestyling the song. Well, rap, rapping the song without the music. And the song is Seven Pounds of Pressure. And so he's just rapping about what he just did, honestly. <laughs> and uh, Maine in the crowd looking, you know, with the scowl on his face because he's a hater. And Mercedes comes out and has her last dance, like for real, for real. She come out there and she dances with murder one last time. And she eats it up like she always do. Like she always do. I love to see it. I was I was happy to see it. It's like we ain't get to see Mercedes all season. All season, we ain't see her 
We didn't get to see Mercedes doing her thing except for the very first episode. After that, she would hurt, I think. She would hurt pretty much, yeah, because she she would hurt from the beginning, right? Because she, <laughs> she was complaining about that shoulder in the very first episode of this season. So, yeah, we ain't really seen Mercedes do her thing um, besides being over there at Coach House. So, it was good to see her back. Next, we see Patrice Woodbine. She at the church and everybody laying hands on, everybody praying on her. She in the middle, you know, everybody praying, <laughs> praying and laying hands over. She get a call from um, Wayne, who's congratulating her and telling her, you know, about how closely they'll be working with one another. So she won. It's safe to say that she won. Anyway, Andre Obama out there doing a press conference. You know, he thinks he's about to... Um, greet the people and um no i think he knows i think he knows i don't know but anyway he's out there about to do a press conference and autumn calls him and tells him to keep his head up and at the same time we hear wayne calling patrice um i told y'all <laughs> earlier but at the same time he was making the call to patrice you know to congratulate her for winning um but there's a reporter that asks andre if he's spoken to the mayor elect yet and so this is how we find out this is how we know that patrice woodbine done won she's the mayor mayor what she wants she want to be called mayor bishop a <laughs> bishop mayor mayor bush mayor bishop i don't know one of the two um anyway back at the pink murder tells maine directly you know get on up out of here unless you want the seven pounds of pressure Straight like that. <laughs> and Maine proceeds to turn around and go on back out there. Because, I mean, what else he going to do? Andre, while he's up there, he speaks to the crowd. He's um, He tells him that he's opening up a new law practice there. He will be moving back home, you know, so he coming back either way. He and Brittany up there holding hands, you know, pretending to like each other. It's really sad, honestly. <laughs> Autumn in the crowd, you know, looking at them like... This is some shit here. Yeah. You standing you standing in the crowd looking at your baby daddy and his wife. Girl, <laughs> pack it up and go. Okay, just pack it up and go. Anyway, after all of that, um, Mercedes and Murder at the Pink. Over here at the Pink. Mercedes and Murder, they, they find Clifford in the dressing room like bawling. He, she is in tears. She says that grandmother didn't drink the water. She didn't take the water. She didn't drink the water. She's still here. So she's still alive. Whew. When I tell you I was nervous all season long, I didn't know what was going to happen to grandmother Ernestine. But grandmother going to make it. She going to make it. She going to make it. So we, it, like I said, some, some of these, or maybe I didn't say it. I'm saying it now. <laughs> Some of these storylines were wrapped up and then others were left, you know, with cliffhangers. And so it's like, it's almost as if she'll be back for another season. Clifford will be back. Him and he, I mean, she and grandmother will be back for another season. I don't know, guys. I just, I really hope, I really hope that this is just, you know, maybe, you know, that it's just, they just taking their time. <laughs> I don't know, but please come back. <laughs> please. Oh. <sighs> Uh, Mississippi, we see she finds the card that Autumn left for her with the cash in the trunk and all of that just as Autumn promised. So she it's looking like she gonna get out. Murder and Clifford are in bed and Murder says that he's headed on tour today and so Clifford didn't think that he was gonna go but you know so how long you gonna be gone all of that and Murder says that he doesn't know how long he's gonna be gone. He don't know when he's coming back. Um, Clifford tells him that he's going to make it, you know, you're going to make it LaMarcus. And so she's telling him, you know, the sun shines. I got my light. You got your light. Basically go on and live your life. Go, go on tour, go do your thing. Cause I know we can't be together anyway. You're not out. You know, he Clifford, I mean, she's Clifford's not getting her hopes up about none of this. Um, murder says that she's been thinking, you know, what if they knew, what if people knew and Clifford tells him it's probably best that they don't. It's probably best that they don't know, you know. And Grandmother Ernestine going to be back anyway. So, yeah, go on, on and do your thing. Murder looked like he was in his feelings about that. You know, it's almost like don't try to push me away. You know, he I, I think that he's feeling pushed away. 
but it is what it is patrice and her new office twirling around <laughs> making you know making herself at home making herself comfortable she already doing interviews, you know, she telling the people she might be the mayor of Sodom and Gomorrah, but she plans to rid this town of all of its vices. Um, and oh, and we can call her Mayor Bishop. That's what she want to be called, Mayor Bishop. Mercedes is watching on the news, just shaking her head, smoking her blunt. <laughs> she get a, a, a package at the door and it's a poster. And the poster is of her. It's a, you know, a large, pic large picture of her um, that Farrah sent her. Excuse me. So she calls Farrah and Farrah done sent her that poster with a check telling her, you know, you deserve royalty for this. You know, this is not your, your payment that coach ain't give you. This, these are the royalties that you are owed for you, for me, you know, using your likeness and all of that. So Mercedes, you know, the Mercedes experience actually did pay off. Go ahead, girl. Farrah looked out for the girl. Farrah looked out. Andre got a line of holes down the street. <laughs> These people bold because his wife's standing right on the on the porch and y'all line really lined up outside the house with your pot roast, with your collard greens, <laughs> with your neck bones, with your oxtail, with your fried fish, with your fried chicken, with your meatloaf, with your peach cobbler, with your pound cake. <laughs> Everybody got them a plate of something standing outside them people house lined up to congratulate. I mean, to, you know, um, give the new uh no, no, he ain't the, the mayor. Well, to give him whatever congratulations that they gonna give him. I don't know. Um, and in the line is Autumn, of course. Autumn is in the line and she gives him a cigar. His wife on the stoop watching because, you know, she know who Autumn is. <laughs> um, and she he tells her, you know, they do the, the, the flirting and all of that and you know how she like to talk in riddles and all that shit. <laughs> he tells her that she never told him what she wanted to tell him. And she's like, you know, the best thing. Something about the best thing. I don't know what I don't know what Autumn be talking about. I'm not I'm, I'm not even finna try to remember what she said verbatim. But um She'll see him around. <laughs> she'll see him around. I'm not even finna. <laughs> anyway. She calls the the lady, you know, the lady from from the promised land. She called her talking about some, where's my offer, bitch? <laughs> and that lady like, girl, what? <laughs> she talking about she asking for 15 million now. No, no, the, 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 the 10 million is done. She want 15 million. And that, that lady basically scoffs at her like, honey, <laughs> I don't need the pink anymore. You know, the good thing about this town is I can bring the water to me. Because, you know, you can't build a casino unless it's on water. And so, she's just going to bring some water to her. <laughs> and then there's that. Um, of course, Autumn's standing there looking cheap. Because she always feels like she got the upper hand. And in this situation, she did not. They were planning on building a whole nother casino. And um, the lady said when she can get, she, she got the city to bring the water to her. And the, the water flows you know, to always flows to where it once was. So even, I guess it used to be a waterway where they're building it. And now it's just, you know, easy to get it back up, to get the, the water back running. Um, so yeah, she should have took that five mil because now she ain't getting nothing. <laughs> have a blessed day, bitch. <laughs> oh, well, Autumn girl, because I mean, you just a scammer anyway. You're just a scammer. If somebody trying to offer me $5 million for anything, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We see Corbin at the house sitting on the porch with his brother. And, you know, they having mimosas. Just And I don't know what it is, but Corbin is excited. So he has gotten exactly what he wanted. He took um, Clifford's advice and brought the water to him. So there's that. He got what he wanted. Grandmother Ernestine, she at the house. She's still coughing. No, excuse me. She's home now. She ain't still at the house. She's back home. <laughs> she's back home and she coughing, but she she's COVID free. Um, Big L and Duffy and them, they show up. They've been hired by grandmother Ernestine to plan a homecoming party. She wants 45 people there. It's like, girl, you just got well and you're trying to have people with the Rona all back up in your face. <sighs> she says she finna give the biggest play a ball a bitch never had. <laughs> Anyway, while Clifford is helping grandmother up the stairs, she hears her mother's voice and she says, you know, she right. Um, 
And she says that um she's not here for, you know, I she because Clifford's like, don't be trying to take grandmother. She ain't going. And she said, I ain't here for her. I'm here for you. I'm here to talk to you. Um, she tells her, don't let love slip away. You can't let love slip away. <laughs> she, I guess, I get this is this is her warning. Don't you be pushing that good man away. Don't do that. Do not do that. Y'all belong together and it's going to come back around full circle. You just stay the course. You just stay the course. Um, Clifford's, you know, saying to her, you know, what love ever did for you, you know, but gave you AIDS and HIV. So his mother passed away from that. She's just like, listen, I made my choices, you know, and with, with my choices, there are risks. There are risks. And sometimes, you know, there are. There's a reward, and she feels like with this situation, with this risk, the reward is greater. So, listen to your mama, Clifford. Keyshawn meets up with Murder. He got her money for her. She's saying her goodbyes. Um, and she, you know, she asks him, Don't tell nobody where I'm going. Don't tell nobody I'm leaving. And he says, You know, your secret's safe with me. And she said, And yours with me. You know, and they give each other a big hug. And of course, I was teary eyed. <laughs> of course, I was teary eyed. Um, she gets in her car to head out because she's going to go pick up the girls now. Mercedes, we see her decorating her gym and um, she got her pictures up and everything and she up on the pole and listen, she still got it. She still got it. I don't know what she thought. I don't know what she thought. You might have been a little sore, but you still got it, girl. <laughs> you still got it. You ain't lost it at all. Patrice drops in on her. They have this, you know, this exchange. It's like a game recognized game moment. <laughs> um, and then she tells her that Shell called her. Well, she called the prayer line and Shell going through. And so Shell says she's going to go to rehab. They got Shell in rehab and Shell has dropped off Terrica at Patrice. And Patrice say, I don't raise my daughter. And so here's your baby. So Patrice finally, finally gave, gave Terrica Back to her mama. Finally. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> so that's that. You know, and I'm 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 glad. I'm happy for Mercedes that, you know, she's fine. She finally gonna have custody of Terrica. Okay, Clifford. Clifford is looking at old pictures and listening to vinyl and all of that when Autumn, she storm in talking about what the fuck have you done? You know, she already knows Clifford behind this whole water, this this whole waterway that's being built again. Um, the Corbin Cow Canal is what it's called. <laughs> but of course, Clifford's like, I listen, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about, girl. Then Clifford gives her a check for $250,000. i am buying you out, bitch. That's how much you gave me for the pink. Here it is. Here it's back. It's back. There you go. And of course, Autumn is like, oh, this ain't 250K. This ain't enough. Like, I'm going to need interest or something like that. And then here come Big L and Diamond standing in the doorway. Diamond got a chainsaw. Big L got a, a, a shovel. So, seem to me like getting rid of a body is, that's enough interest, don't you think? You know, and they kind of closing in on her. <laughs> she take her check and prance her ass on up out of there because what else she going to do? We tired of you. We sick of it, okay, Autumn? I'm tired. Keyshawn, she get over there to her stepmama house. That lady done called Derek. She done called Derek. Derek done came and picked up the kids. And she knew exactly what she was doing. She's a nasty, dirty bitch for that. What if he killed Keyshawn? Then what, mama? Then what? You sent her right back over there to that. You know what, Keyshawn? You should have just got in that car and just left. You should have just left. He want, he, want, he want the kids. He want custody. Okay. Tell him what you want to tell him. I'll come back for him in a little bit. <laughs> I'll come back for him in a little while when, when she muster up some strength, you know, to have her to, to have her moment. You know, but I don't know. But she should have still got in her car and just took off. Fuck going back to the house, Keyshawn. F all that. <sighs> anyway, I like I couldn't believe it. I was really upset. I was really upset. I was really upset. But anyway, she get back home and Derek in the living room with the babies, you know, and 
CPS is also there. They are there to investigate child abuse on her part. It's like they lean in towards her being the abuser and all that. She's standing there, cannot believe her ears. That lady, I don't know if the lady was really mouthing off <laughs> or if this is just what Keyshawn was hearing. Um, but the lady starts going in, you know, this is the problem with you people, with you, with, with you, with y'all baby mamas and all of that. Excuse me, y'all are a hassle. It's always something with y'all with the drugs, with this, with that, with abuse and all of that. They're investigating that, that those bruises that the baby had when he went to the doctor. I knew that was going to come back to bite us. But why is it biting her and not his ass? Because he's the one who did it. But because she went up in the hospital with him, I guess they think it's her. And he ain't going to let him think otherwise. So he's allowing this to, to, to happen. You know, they're basically railroading her. That she got she got to do the mandatory visits, home visits and all of that. They taking the kids, all of that. And so Keyshawn snaps. She completely snaps and dives on his ass and starts beating that tail. And like she should have did a long time ago. She should have snatched the police officer's gun and then went did what, what, what needed to be done. She, hell, they took her ass to jail anyway. Because, of course, like I said, she flipped out. She hit the cops, the police officer and everything. She slapped him too. <laughs> oh. My girl just can't get out. I just, I was just so upset. But anyway, of course, she gets arrested. I'm upset. I am just upset. That's the, that's the other storyline that's left out. You know, that's left with a cliffhanger. Now what? Now what, Keyshawn? Now what? <sighs> should have killed him when she had the chance. <laughs> She should have shot him when he walked through the door like she was planning on doing. Or she should have called, she should have been called Clifford or somebody when she went and went to go get in the car and the car didn't start. She should have been gone from then. But she went back. Anyway, Mercedes, we see her pulling up with Terica and uh Maine standing outside and she introduces him to Terica. And I'm trying, I was thinking, why are you introducing her to him to your baby? Why? To your teenage daughter. N no. Because you've already decided you don't want nothing with Maine in the first place. So why you even do? Why are we going the extra mile? Anyway, she introduces um, the two of them. And Terrica got the googly eyes. And she looking at him. And it's like, girl, that's a grown man. And I don't know if he was looking back or what. But he, I ain't like to look in his eyes. It was just weird. She go prancing in the house twitching and doing all you know you know what the walk is because mercedes told her girl get your ass in the house <laughs> out here googly eye and all that take your tail in the house that girl there fast tail she fast tail for for sure <laughs> you was just pregnant girl sit your ass down and and that's a grown man a grown man Anyway, I feel like that man that got her pregnant was a grown man. Oh, no, he wasn't. He wasn't grown. He was in school with her, wasn't he? He was 14, too. Anyway, she's still fast tail. <laughs> she is still fast tail. Um, Main says to her, you know, because he feel away about her dancing with um, murder. And, you know, she's like, that's the homie. Like, what you, I don't know what your beef is, but I ain't, I ain't in that. <laughs> I ain't got no set wars, no, no, none of that. I'm cool with you, and I'm cool with him. That's just what it is. And he gonna say, uh, you need to tell him that, that you know, tell him, um, oh, no. Tell, yeah, tell tell that faggot to watch his back. And she's like, you don't you be talking, to, uh, talking about Uncle Clifford like that. And he says, I ain't talking about Uncle Clifford. And she looking like, murder? Damn. <laughs> yeah, girl. He talking about he talking about a little murder. I thought that Mercedes knew about his sexuality. I don't know why I thought that. No, the only person that knew was um Keyshawn. She figured it out, you know, and didn't judge him or nothing like that. That was, she was the only one that um that really knew as far as the girls went. All right, it's the players' ball. It's, it's grandmother Ernestine's player ball. The girls outside tonight. 
um pretty brown eyes comes on and we look over there in the crowd who we see murder it's murder <laughs> he the one put it on on the jukebox so he's there he's there to say goodbye to to his girls mercedes to mercedes i mean not mercedes to uh grandmother ernestine and uncle clifford and all of that and um mercedes and terica they are they also show up and mercedes notices again how clifford and murder are kind of like i and one another and she's like that's you ain't it <laughs> Clifford say, girl, come on in the back, girl. Come on in the kitchen. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> Benny Diamond, he's there at the party, and he gets this um, unknown call. And Big Bone's sitting there with him. You know, he tells her he got to go take the call. She's looking over her shoulder trying to see what's what. Girl, we know you done, We know you up to no good. We already know. He, the call he's getting is from the jail. So it's Keyshawn. Keyshawn done called, talking about, she tells him that um, she thought that her hair was long enough, but the beast swallowed the key. And Benny Diamond says, did he really? And she's like, I'm going to need, I'm going to, you remember that story about that night? I'm going to need the night. I'm going to need the night to save me. Can you do that? I'm going to need the night to take care of it. That's what she said. Can you take care of it? No, not can you, can the night take care of it? You know, we got to talk in code because this, this, this call is being monitored and recorded <laughs> for quality assurance. Um, so yeah, there's that. She just done put a hit out on Derek. She should have been let him kill. Girl, I would, I probably would have hung up on her ass because it's like, when I tried to shoot his ass, you pulled a gun on me. And so, find another hit man. Find another hit man. Because I ain't the one. <laughs> but no, you know Benny Diamond going to do what it is he going to do. Because he love her. He love her. Clifford. She tells Mercedes, um, you know, all about Autumn and all of that. And Mercedes leaving. And, um, you know, enough about all of that. Clifford says that she got plans and all of that. She got her girl back. She got this. She got that. It's cool. Mercedes like, no, that was really my last dance. <laughs> that was really Mercedes' last dance. So I will not be I will not be coming back. I will not be returning. It's t it's time. Of course, Clifford's Clifford's starting to feel abandoned because everybody leaving. And she's like, no, nah, just think of it like a graduation. We all graduated, you know, dreaming new dreams. Um, and then Clifford says, you know, who's gonna take your place? And she's like, Nobody. Ain't that the point? Ain't nobody taking my place. That's the point. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. Wanda Roulette, we see she's in the bathroom doing the cocaine. And the bathroom lady mentions Toy. You know, it's just, it's, a, it's a shame how Toy got kicked out, ain't it? And Wanda's, Wanda Roulette's like, she'll be all right, and, you know, headed out. And bathroom lady says, I bet. I know what y'all be doing. And now, of course, Wanda Roulette, bitch, what, what you talking about? What you mean? Girl, I got your diamonds. I see you with your diamonds and pearls and your designer with your Fendi and your Louis. <laughs> I see you with your designer girl with your good clothes with your good garments and uh Wanda Roulette she starts saying uh bitch which I don't know what you trying to imply but I make all of this and more just dancing and she's like well then why it's not enough I know why it's not enough <laughs> I know why it's not enough and she's like um you know them niggas it's 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 one thing to have the experience but these niggas at some point, want the real deal, you know? So that's what that is. And it's almost like she's trying to put in her own application. <laughs> she she proceeds to put in her application. You know, she like, uh, niggas will pay top dollar for a girl like me. You ain't got no trans girls on the roster. Put me on the roll. Put my name on the roll. She want her name on the roll. <laughs> so Wanda Roulette sizing her up like, bitch, I guess. <laughs> Um, Wanda Roulette, she take a bump. You know, she's like, how I know you ain't going to tell Uncle Clifford? And then the girl, she take a bump. It's a lot of things I ain't told Uncle Clifford. You going to put my name on the roll or what? And so here we got this, another cliffhanger. Wanda Roulette finna be in charge of the girls. In charge of the girls, okay? <laughs> I am in charge of the girls. That's going to be Wanda Roulette, okay? Who's in charge of the girls? 
I'm in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. <laughs> I love that movie. I love, love, love Harlem Nights. Anyway, um, so bathroom lady, she down. She finna be a prostitute too. Clifford and Mercedes, they're walking back outside and they run into murder who's sitting at the bar. He been looking for Clifford, you know, to talk to her. And he tells her that he's not going back on tour. And Clifford thinks that he's making a big mistake, you know, or that he's scared. And she tells him that you're scared of making it, you know, and don't say that it's all because you want to stay here and cook for a nigga and his grandmother, because that's not it. <clears throat> Murder says that it's his decision. That is his decision. Um, and Clifford is like, no, it's not a decision. It's impulse. And you can't. That's the sister of stupidity. <laughs> And Murder says that, you know, no, you're pushing me away because you're scared. You're scared of commitment. You're scared of this relationship. You're scared of being loved. You are fearful of somebody just th that you don't, you don't, you don't think that, that you're worthy of the love that I'm giving you. And you are. Um, Clifford says, you know, what do, what you know about love? Because, you know, but Clifford basically is like, as young as you are, what, what kind of love have you experienced? And then here we go. Now he now this is when murder got to got to come clean and he tells her about his first love and his his you know his relationship with Big T and what happened with Big T. And um Clifford doesn't want murder to resent him in any way for not going on the tour. You know, he doesn't want he doesn't want him to get to wake up one day resentful. And murder just says that is not your choice. It ain't going to happen and plus it's not your choice. So, there's that. Big L interrupts. And so, he has to go out. She has to go outside. Because he got to show her something. And when she get back to the back, she sit down to the computer. And she sees that the account is negative 24000 They like, well, what we, I know we made the money last night. What in the world going on? Y'all know what's going on. Redbone. Autumn done took his took their money the same way she took Montavious's money right right out from under here right out from under here she done took the money again <laughs> of course clifford is going through you know looking through receipts and looking through recent transactions and all of that big l is like i told you we should have killed that girl told you you told you you should have let me split her wig <laughs> clifford is pissed pissed it is what it is, honestly. And Big L is just like, I got what you need. I know you ain't want the drugs here, but I got them. Got some pills in his hand. <laughs> Go on here, take them. She like, listen, hand the whole bag over, honestly. Just give me the whole bag to take the edge off. Anyway, Autumn and her wig, we see she really is. She done took the money, she gone. We don't know where she at. We don't know what, what country she's in, but she, she and her wig are out of there. Bye, girl. <laughs> you can't believe you done stole from clifford to get like that he gave you your money back you could have took your took your little two hundred fifty thousand and gone on about your business there was no reason to you know fuck him again clifford she hired up now so she back to the party dancing the night away everybody's having a time okay they're having a time murder comes up from behind grabs her by the waist like you know you're supposed to grab your woman on the dance floor and they're dancing and it's 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 giving it is giving and then you know out of nowhere they kissing <laughs> murder's like you ain't you ain't dreaming nigga <laughs> this ain't a dream nigga i'm really here i'm really here doing this out in the open in front of capacity Everybody can see their love. So they dancing and they kissing on the dance floor and the whole crowd like this. It's some people like this. It's some people like this. It's some people like this. Oh. It's some people like this. That's me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was me. Just so it's just so excited for them, you know. I love, I love it. I love love. Don't y'all love love? Love is everything. It really is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the love. <laughs> um. Anyway, they standing there, you know, staring at everybody. Everybody in the crowd standing there, staring at them, and they look. Y'all fools looking at <laughs> y'all, cause y'all just done really started kissing. 
<laughs> some people wasn't ready and then some people you know were here for it anyway benny diamond we see him getting ready you know he getting the tools ready packing the tools up in the trunk getting ready to go take care of Derek, and he get hit upside the head by who big bone just like I suspected, that bitch was not to be trusted. She done hit Benny Diamond over the head. And they get in a tussle. And then, you know, he, he kind of fight her off a little bit. But then here comes some more people. And they got him, you know, it's, it's two, it's three on, on one. And so, they throw him in the trunk. And Benny starts having a PTSD moment. I, th I think he feel like it's finna be it. It's finna be over. It's over with. And the, the gunman got the gun on him. It's like... Nigga, that'd be too easy. And they slam the trunk and leave him there. Oh, before, excuse me, before that. <laughs> Damn, I hate when I miss something. It's miss pertinent information. Um, Big Bone ass. <laughs> she had a mask on and she tells the guy, she's like, that's the nigga that, that, that killed our lieutenant. That's the nigga. And then she take her mask off and he sees that it's Big Bone. And then he thinks he's about to get shot. And, and, and the guy's like, nah, that'd be too easy. And he just slams the trunk, leaving Benny inside. So they finna drive off and try to torture Benny or something, kidnap him. They finna do something with Benny. We'll find out in season three. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope we'll find out in season three, child. <clears throat> But that's it. That is that is the ending. That's the, the cliffhanger we were left with with Benny being kidnapped by Big Bone and, and the people. <laughs> and the DD boys. I I just... <sighs> I hate feeling like this because I'm still unsure about, <laughs> about there being a season three. And I don't want it to be this. I don't want this to be it. You know, if we're going to close up storylines, close them all up when we ain't sure we're coming back. Because y'all done left me with some cliffhangers and I want to come back now. I got to see if Keyshawn gets out of jail. I got to see if Benny Diamond gets out of that trunk, you know, makes his way out of that trunk and gets over to the Derrick's house to kill him. I got to see Grandmother Ernestine and her African boyfriend, you know, because what was they up to talking about this will be the perfect spot? What was that? I ain't forgot. And now she just, you know, canoodling with the guy. So it's like, I got questions. <laughs> I got questions. So please come back. Please, please, please. Let's say a prayer. Bow your heads with me, okay? Father God, I know some of the stuff that goes on on the show, you ain't with it. I know that. But entertainment is what you have given us. And I, since I like to be entertained and I was entertained by this show, please, Lord, give me the desires of my heart. I know that you'll do it. Bring this show back for a third season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. It's so. It is so. We're going to get a third season. All right. Let me get out of here because I got to edit this. And, and, and because I have stopped it so many times, <laughs> it's going to take me some time to edit this. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.